Attention. Attention. Encoded message. A member on Reddit datamined the audio recordings on the public test server for The Division 2. These recordings contain major leaks regarding the following three seasons, its manhunt targets and the lore regarding The Division 2. It will answer questions we have had since the beginning of our journey and reintroduces us to major characters. The data mined information is considered a leak and hasn't been confirmed by Massive Entertainment, so take everything you will hear with a grain of salt. Another Reddit user mentions that the certain voice lines, like the one from Kelso, Schaefer and Alice, are pretty much set in stone but others haven't been recorded or are placeholders with text-to-speech. It's possible this will all turn out way different than it's stated here. Given this information, it speaks for itself that we're entering dangerous spoiler territory here regarding the up and coming lore for The Division 2. If you don't want it spoiled, it's best to click off the video. However, for those that are interested, let's talk about the men and targets for second to fourth season and how the story envelops. The second season will be called Keener's Legacy and its manhunt will reintroduce a character from the first game, the first wave and now rogue division agent Hornet. After supposedly dying in his attempt to extract Vitaly Chernenko for Keener at the Russian consulate, Hornet was resurrected by another rogue agent sent by Keener. Thermite, an ex-field surgeon managed to restart Hornet's heart and saved his life. Keener and Hornet apparently were best friends back when they were in the army together. And contrary to the other rogue agents Keener befriended, Keener actually cared for Hornet. At one point when Keener and Hornet were talking, Keener assumes his death is around the corner and Hornet states that he will carry on his legacy, as to which Keener says it's their legacy. Hornet was sent to Washington DC to recruit outcasts for future operations and ensure their legacy can go on. He will do this from the former Black Tusk stronghold, Tidal Basin, where he will use Black Tusk's left behind equipment and Project Eclipse. But he's not alone in this. Termite, the rogue agent that saved his life, is one of the other manhunt targets, together with Huntsman, the former Shade recruiter that cleared Keener as an agent. On top of the stranded hovercraft in Tidal Basin, Hornet will put up a fight using Project Eclipse until he is defeated, upon which he will drop the repair mod for the trap prematurely ending Keener's legacy. The third season, although its title is unknown, will be even wilder than the second and will answer important questions and progresses the narrative from Warlords of New York. The Manhunt's prime target will be Barden Schaefer, the leading operative of the Black Tusk Special Unit. Black Tusk has been suffering losses due to the Division's counter-operations and in his despair, Schaefer starts recruiting rogue agents to his cast, even though he doesn't like them. After being pushed back, Schaefer will call for a meeting with Lau at Coney Island Amusement Park to find out what she is up to. Her plan will have to wait for the fourth season, but at the park we will encounter the Psycho Hunter. It's first assumed he is here to hunt down Schaefer, but he seems to be toying with the Division. Towards the end of the mission, Schaefer tells the Hunter it's enough fun and games, at which point we will have to fight him. After defeating the Hunter, Schaefer dispatches two novel BTSU operatives until we end up facing Schaefer himself, resulting in the explosive mod for the trap. However, that's not everything interesting from this mission. Where the Hunter's appearance will be explained more in the fourth season, the prime target man and mission will introduce Natalia Sokolova. From her conversations with Schaefer, Sokolova appears his superior as they are on a first name basis. She asks how the hunter is doing to which Schaefer replies negative on the hunter. The fourth season, again untitled, will see the resurfacing of Lau as the prime manhunt target. Lau plans a meeting with Andrew Ellis, the former president of the United States at Camp White Oak. Countering her operation, the division ensues on a manhunt for Lau but are not to eliminate Ellis, as he is still president. As the division closes in on a cabin, Lau aims at Ellis and shoots him point blank. As she rushes to her extraction, Lau informs the remaining Black Tusk that the division is responsible for the death of Ellis. 
Lau's escape plan is disturbed when an electrical issue keeps the extraction helicopter grounded. It's assumed we're in the final battle against Lau. However, as opposed to Hornet and Schaefer, there is no audio recording stating the death of Lau, nor is there a skill mod that drops, leading us to believe this isn't where she will die. However, during this season, Lau isn't alone. Other than Alicia Coswald reappearing, the rogue agent that joined Black Tusk before Lau did, were introduced to Felix Sokolov, Natalia Sokolova's brother. Supposedly tied to the military gear manufacturer Sokolov Concern, the Sokolovs, a Russian company, have business in the United States and are one of the investors or mysterious benefactors behind Black Tusk. Other than these additions to the lore, it's rumored there will be a skyscraper mode that will work similar to the underground. Audio recordings from Kelso state we need to secure a skyscraper floor by floor up to 100 floors, with every 10 floors a safe area. You will be able to clear this, but every 10 floors you can take a break, join the open world and rejoin later from that floor. It sounds interesting to say the least, we'll have to see how it turns out. Before I want to end the video, I would like to reflect on the data mined information on the lore for the upcoming three seasons. I'm both excited to find out the up and coming lore and disappointed how it will be introduced to us. I'm excited that we're continuing Keener's legacy, hunting down rogue agents, Schaefer, Lau and the Sokolov family. However, I'm very disappointed if huge questions regarding the narrative's largest plot points will be answered and continued through bounties, recycled strongholds and audio recordings. Similar to Warlords of New York, I feel that large story elements within the lore like Keener's legacy, the manhunt for Shaver and Lau, as well as the background story on the Hunters and apparently now the Sokolov, deserve their, their own expansion with unique missions, unique audio recordings, echoes and new characters. If the first season of Manon showed us anything is that it's very underwhelming in regards of the amount and the frequency of the content drops. To reflect on each season individually, let's start with the second one, Keener's Legacy. I'm excited to see Hornet return and love how they're introducing us to the background story Keener and Hornet have. The fact that we never knew this and his resurrection does make it feel like they just came up with this and didn't think it through beforehand, but it still makes sense nonetheless. Also, the introduction of other rogue agents and Keener's former Shade Recruiter is awesome too. The part I don't like is that other than it mostly being bounties and a recycled stronghold, is that Hornet is sent to recruit outcasts for Keener. Similar to the lore from the first season Manant, it doesn't make sense. In Warlords of New York, Keener had been working months on the Rogue Network and Project Eclipse, two huge projects, and now we're recruiting outcasts. It seems underwhelming and it doesn't really make sense because the outcasts, similar to all the other factions, are part of the problem in this post-pandemic United States. And that's what we're fighting against. The third season has, similarly to the second one, good and not so good points. The manhunt for Schaefer recruiting rogue agents for the BTSU from a narrative standpoint makes sense. The Psycho Hunter is an interesting surprise and I'm not sure how I feel about it. On the one hand it's awesome to see him being a badass, but it's weird to have hunters working with Black Tusk now. It's unknown if all hunters will work with Black Tusk, as it could be sort of a rogue hunter I guess, but the hunter brutally murdering Rikers, not saying a word and playing around with the division is awesome. I have the same gripes as with the second season, that I don't feel bounties and recycled strongholds will do these characters and factions justice. The fourth season has us hunting down Lau and introduces us to the Sokolov family. I'm not sure what Lau gains by executing Alice and blaming the Division as both Black Tusk and the Division needed him alive. I suppose it could ruin the Division's image to the populace of the United States, blaming them for the death of the president, but I have my doubts. Felix and Natalia Sokolov being at least part of the mysterious benefactors behind Black Tusk kind of makes sense and I'm interested to see how they will introduce them to us. Again the same gripes as with the seasons before, it doesn't do the lore justice to only have bounties, recycled strongholds and a few audio recordings. To summarize, I think there's amazing potential in the up and coming lore for The Division 2 but I feel like seasoned manhunts won't do it justice. Still, I'm ready to be proven wrong. Perhaps the developers have more in store than just bounties, recycled strongholds and audio recordings. I'm still hoping for another expansion or even a narrative-driven co-op or single-player The Division game. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you guys liked this video, please show so by leaving a like or a dislike depending on what you thought of the video. 
If you're interested in more lore on the Division 2 or other games like Modern Warfare or The Last of Us Part 2, make sure to subscribe and even click the notification bell to stay up to date on my uploads. If you want to support me in what I do, you can become a channel member for $1, $5 or $10 and unlock exclusive rewards such as digital lore items and exclusive posts. If you don't have the money or decide to spend it on other things, that's fine too. I will still be creating these videos because I love what I do. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching and peace out.